Hello, my name is Sharuk Ashraf and I'm an FAE for ST Microelectronics. Today I'll be demonstrating an over-the-air update or OTA implementation using our SPC 58 series Chorus device. The device in particular we're using today is Chorus 4M and as the name suggests it features 4 megabytes of flash and dual power PCZ for cores running up to 180 megahertz. This device targets gateway and body applications. This demo today will demonstrate how we can manage two separate firmware images on a microcontroller without a hardware virtualization or a memory management unit. This is a software solution where we develop position independent firmware along with a static bootloader, which makes it possible for us to compile this code for one partition and execute it on different partition with a different base address. Before we move on to the actual demo, let's just quickly overview how the memory space looks like for this application. Consider this green box as the whole code flash area. For this microcontroller, we have application A and application B residing in either of the partition. Application A is single LED toggling and application B we have two LED toggling with a different pattern. It is important to note here that both the applications are built for partition zero and are position dependent. We will start this demo with only application A flashed to the microcontroller and the other partition is completely erased. Okay, so let's start our demo. So this is our PC application which communicates to our uh, discovery board over the UART. So as soon as we power up the evaluation board, it should automatically detect. So here we go, it it's detected the connection. Now, uh, if we check the version of what softwares are on there, Let's do go ahead and do that. I click read version and it tells me that there's no alternate version detected. That's expected because right now we have only uh, application A flashed onto the microcontroller. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to flash a new firmware, the application B or in version six. I open the strike, select it. The, the application parses it in 16 bytes blocks. And as soon as I hit flash device, it was going to start the erase process for the partition. And the important point to note here is that the application A is still running while the erase was going. And now the flashing has started and still the application A is running. So it's a non-blocking operation because we are using a task-based system. This implementation provides zero downtime. You can see the LED, one LED blinking signifying application A is running. You can see the progress bar also here. It tell, telling us how much the flashing is complete. Once this is done, we'll get a notification that the flash is complete. Let's wait for that. So now our flashing is complete. I hit OK. And now I again try to read the versions. Now it's telling me that we have version 5 or application A as the active and alternate version, version number 6 or application B in there. So it's still running application A. And let me show you, even if I try power it off and on, it's still going to be application A until we click the swap application. So let's go ahead and do that. So devices reset and application swap is complete now. Now if I read back again the versions, so as expected, now the active version is version number 6. And we can see the new LEDs are blinking now. So we can uh, go ahead and try to turn it off and on and see which application it boots to. So see, as expected, it's booting up to application B now. And we can always revert back to our older application if we just click the swap application again, device reset. And if we read our versions again, now they're flipped again. So now the active version is version five and you can see on the evaluation board also that the, our application A is back. So this way we can keep both the application until a new one, the third one arrives, we can erase the older one and replace it. That's it for today's demo. Thank you for joining.